Hello friends, welcome to our YouTube channel and today we will be talking about the access formation in C elegans and in axis formation today we will be discussing about the anterior and posterior axis. Till now in the last two lectures based on the C elegans we have already studied about the formation of vulva in the C elegans as well as the genesis of or uh, genesis of the anchor cell in the C elegans. Now whenever it enter into the ova, whenever it enter into the egg of the C elegans and here only the fate of the anterior and posterior axis is decided and the decision of the anterior and posterior axis is mediated with the help of some sort of protein and that is called as the partition deficient and that is called as the power protein. So let us take a look. Okay. <clears throat> now we have uh, right now we have a cell. Right now, suppose we have a cell and this cell is you can say we have a cell and this is egg and this is the sperm and whenever the sperm enters into the ova whenever the sperm enters into the ova what actually happens it releases its centriole it releases its centriole okay so this is you can say here you can say <clears throat> so this is then sperm and this another uh, entire part is called is this is a sperm nucleus pro nucleus and this is egg pro egg pro nucleus okay this is right up to this it is clear suppose the sperm enters from this region okay so it enters from this region whenever the sperm enters it is directly based upon the location of the ovum where the location of the ovum is there and in opposite to the ovum location the entry of the sperm workers so suppose here this is an ova egg uh, this is the ova nucleus then obviously definitely uh, the entry of the sperm occurs in just opposite to the direction of the ova nucleus so right now here in this case the sperm enters the sperm enters from this region and this will the entry of the sperm will decide the anterior and the posterior axis in the C elegans. Now what actually happens here? Here it is the small pronucleus and this one is the uh, egg pronucleus and this one is the uh, centriole. Okay, what actually happens here and these are the power proteins. Power proteins and these are power 1 and 2. one and two proteins okay and the whatever we are looking at this region and suppose this is a cortical region okay this is a cortical region and this cortical region is embedded with and it is flooded with the protein and that is called as you can say this is embedded with and it is filled up with this cortical region 
कॉर्टिकल रीजन दिस इज कॉर्टिकल एंड दिस इज यू कैन से दिस इज हैविंग द पार थ्री पार सिक्स एंड इट इज हेल्ड टूगेदर विद द हेल्प ऑफ द प्रोटीन कैने सी थ्री सो दिस इज अ टिपिकल डायग्राम ऑफ द एग एग प्रो न्यूक्लियस एंड इट्स इंट्री to the uh, and and in entry of a sperm to this area now what actually happens <clears throat> what the, what is the role of centriole here okay in the second step what will happen the centriole will starts to rearrange the par protein okay right now there is a two question <clears throat> two question arises here Why this PAR three and PAR PAR six protein is lying in the cortical region, whereas the PAR one and PAR two protein is lying in the cytoplasm? The basic reason is that the protein kinase C keep on uh, phosphorylating this PAR one and PAR two protein, and this is the region. This is the reason it is lying in the cytoplasm, and uh, PAR three and PAR six stop and inhibit and restrict. This PAR one and PAR protein to reach into the cortical region, and this is the reason why the PAR six and three is in the cortical region, and PAR one and two in the cytoplasmic region. But what actually happened whenever the centriole arrives with the entry of the sperm? Okay, the centriole arrives. The uh, the centriole it has a two function. First, it actually uh, what does it actually do? Firstly, it this it dephosphorylate it dephosphorylate the PAR one and PAR two protein first, and the second it just bring the PAR one and PAR two protein to the cortical region. It brings PAR one and PAR two region in the cortical region. So there is a two function right now here till now that the centriole what will do? It will rearrange with the help of the microtubule. Uh, with the help of the microtubule protein, it will rearrange the PAR one and PAR two protein on the surface or or on the cortical region. Okay, so now what we get here, we are getting okay. <coughs> just to differentiate uh this par1 and par2 let me draw here dot uh, with the black ink so that we can easily derive or make a diagram with two different color so suppose this is the par1 and 2 protein and whatever it is lying on the cortex uh, cortical region that is the par3 and 6 Right now, that is clear. Then what actually happens here? He, uh, this microtubule centriole will rearrange this par. This rear uh, will rearrange this par one and two protein. Right now, this is par one and two protein. Par two and uh, par one and par two protein. Okay, and <coughs> this is obviously it is a nucleus. this is the nucleus okay this is the nucleus of the ova or you can see the egg nucleus and this is the sperm nucleus and what actually does this one this microtubule and the centriole will rearrange this par protein this re this will rearrange the par protein okay this will rearrange the par protein to this area and this is the reason why this par1 and par2 par2 proteins are confined to the region where the sperm pro nucleus is lying okay if you can see it very clearly that the par1 and par2 protein is just distributed throughout the cytoplasm but right now here it is confined to this specific part of the cytoplasm 
okay so what actually happens so this is the microtubule microtubule okay and this is the arrangement of suppose this is the arrangement of par 1 and par 2 protein okay and these are the par 3 3 and par 6 protein par 6 okay and pkc 3 <coughs> now what what happens here okay the yeah this one this uh, microtubule is pro, uh, performing two function here again what happens here it just is removing the cytoplasm to this region okay so this will keep on removing the cytoplasm to this region and resultant what will happen this par 1 protein will move toward the cortical region first it will just remove the cytoplasm it will just remove the cytoplasm and it will whenever it will remove the cytoplasm this par 1 protein will move towards the cortical region first uh, cortical region after being the first related okay second this pro uh, this pro nucleus will try to move this pro nucleus will try to move toward the center okay it will try to move toward the you can see it will move toward the oblong egg cell okay and third what will happen the movement of this microtubule will occur toward this region and this will result into the rearrangement of the par 1 and par 2 protein to this region okay suppose this is an axis okay this is the axis then whenever uh, this microtubule will uh, just spread toward this region resultant what what uh, the resultant will happen this par 1 and par 2 protein will rearrange themselves on the this this region okay on the cortical region and the fourth uh, the, the third one is that he whenever it arranges on the cortical region which one the par 1 and par 2 protein whenever it will arrange on the cortical region it will phosphorylate it will phosphorylate par 3 par 6 and the pkc protein and this phosphorylation will result into the shifting of this part 3 and part 6 protein to from this area to this area <coughs> this is the first half and this one is the second half this one is the first half and this one is the second half <coughs> now at the equatorial plate the division of both the cell occurs so the fusion of the both the pro nuclei occur The, uh, the fusion of the both pro nuclei occurs here. Let us let me make the diagram in this way here. It is better to make from the red pen. okay right now what we actually what what we have what we are looking here means uh, the shifting of the par 1 protein the shifting of the par 1 protein is completed on the cortical region and this cortical region par 1 and par 2 protein uh, will phosphorylate the par 3 and par 6 protein and resultant what will happen it will remove the par 3 and par 6 protein from the another half of the cell okay another half of the cortical region and what will happen the equal half equal half will be dominated by the part 3 and part 6 protein 
पार थ्री एंड एंड पार सिक्स प्रोटीन एंड दिस इक्वल हाफ विल बी डोमिनेटेड बाय पार वन एंड पार टू प्रोटीन ओके नाउ आफ्टर फ्यूजन व्हाट विल हैपन एट द मेटाफेज स्टेज व्हाट विल हैपन दिस टू सेल विल स्टार्ट टू मूव अब इस व्हेन एवर इट विल मूव what will happen the centriole of the both the nucleus uh, will start to move toward their opposite pole and whenever they uh, try will start to move toward the opposite pole opposite pole then what will happen let us see actually now <clears throat> suppose this is a equatorial metaphase plate and centriole this is a centriole and with this centriole <coughs> the astral ridge okay at the metaphysic plate formation of metaphasic plate here what actually what happens this is a metaphase plate this is a metaphase plate and there will be formation of the furo in the cell and this will result into the formation of so from the previous diagram we see here that at the metaphasic plate the uh, they are all uh, the the centriole the centriole of both the cell get localized and reach toward the uh, uh, reach toward the opposite pole and after reaching into the opposite pole what happens the formation of the metaphase occur and finally what happens the cell just undergoes division okay now here what will happen those cell so we have seen that there is a localization in the left side of the uh, the cell there the, there is a presence of part 3 and part 6 protein and on the right side of the pro, uh, cell there is a presence of part 1 and part, part 2 protein so what will happen right now here we are here uh, uh, we are uh, on the right now here position at this protein at this side there is a part 3 protein and par 6 protein and at this region par 1 and par 2 protein okay so so uh to those partic those uh, those cell which contain the those cell which will contain the part 3 and part 6 protein will result into the formation of the anterior cell and at the site of okay the entry of the sperm where there is an accumulation of after the subsequent stage there is an accumulation of the part 1 and part 2 protein will lead to the formation of the posterior part so from this diagram it is very clear that 
whenever there is an abundance of the part 3 and part 6 protein because part 3 and part 6 protein are the conjugate uh, are, are the proteins which uh, uh, lives together and part 1 and part 2 proteins are also the partner and which uh, the, they lives together okay so whenever there is an abundance of the part 1 and part 2 protein to this reason then it will make a posterior part of the uh, c elegans after division uh, and whenever there is an abundance of part 3 and part uh, part 6 protein that particular side will be the uh, will lead to the formation of the anterior side of the c elegans so this was about the fusion of the gametes uh, of uh, uh, the c elegans that is called as the egg and sperm and at the site of the entry of the sperm into the ovum cell will result into the formation of the posterior part and the away from this region or the opposites opposite side of the sperm entry particle will be dominated by the part 3 and part 6 protein and this will lead to the formation of the anterior part of the c elegans so this was about the anterior and posterior axis in the c elegans zygote hope you like the video if you like it don't forget to share subscribe and comment thank you thanks for watching